welcome to your week three. Um, this is this week is all about body image, and so I brought my very special friend Georgia here. Hello, good to meet you guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, she's at Motion Medicine on Instagram and YouTube, and she does like the most amazing um, like Pilates and ballet exercises, um, like full body workouts and stretches. All about that flexibility. All about that, that strength and flexibility. Yeah. Life. <laughs> so I want to check her out, and um, I thought she'd be a great guest to have on today because she's. Helped me a lot with my body image. So, Aww. yeah. So, introduce yourself to the browser. Um, so, yeah, my name is G. Um, and I'll just say like a little bit about me and my background. So I was a professional dancer for the past 10 years and then I moved to Vancouver two years ago and I started my own um, adult ballet school, which is called Bunhead Dance, which is where I met Miss Lovely Jen because she came to one of my ballet classes. Yes, yeah. I'm an adult beginner. She is an adult beginner ballerina. Yeah. It's and never too late to start. It is never too late to start. <laughs> <no>. <laughs> um, as she mentioned, I also do motion medicine, which is uh, lots of Pilates and bar and flexibility and strength training, which is actually like really good as well for because um I do try triathlete training as well with Jen so we run and cycle and everything together and I'm always banking on about how we have to stretch and yes. balance it all out aren't I so definitely important yeah. so how did you get into the dance world and like become a professional ballerina okay so it's actually a quite a unusual story Ooh. yeah I, I don't know I've never told you this yeah, before I've never heard this before okay so, so I actually was like the least sporty kid in the whole wide world like I was petrified of sport wow. like I was that kid that would drop the egg on the egg and spoon <laughs> race and just like hide and cower in the corner like I just was not uh, I just hated exercise actually really funnily enough um, my, I always come from a super active family and our mum's like um, a crazy walker so we'd always like do lots of hiking and be outdoors all the time and stuff. My mum was a really big runner so exercise was a huge part of her life and it got to about 15 years old and I didn't do anything mm -hmm. and my mum was kind of like trying to gently encourage it like <laughs> I say gently yeah. she was like you need to do some exercise <laughs> and I was like I don't want to it's boring I hate running it's stupid and my best friend at the time was a dancer and she just like lived and breathed yeah. dance and I was like you know you're just at that age where you're kind of like well I'm gonna do whatever my friends do yeah. so I was like well I'm just gonna go to ballet with her and I went to ballet and honestly one class like I went in and I came out and I just was like mom she was like yeah and I was like I'm going to be a ballerina and she was like okay love because yeah, sure. I mean <laughs> like yeah <laughs> And then because, cute. So, yeah, cute babe, yeah. <laughs> she was like, you know, you have to start ballet typically at the age yeah, of three years old. I figured that was yeah, me. and that many start ballet. And even me now, like if any if any student comes to me, I you know, I usually recommend that they start you start the training at three, four years old. Um, but I, I just am I'm an extremely determined individual and I was just I had it in my head I was like no I will be a ballerina so <laughs> I am um, I literally went to classes seven days a week um, I trained for like five hours a day any extra class they would let me in I would even go in with like the 10 year old children even though I was 15 yeah. just to like take any class like lap up any information yeah. that I could about it I practice and stretch and yeah I just completely dedicated my life to it and then a year later I was accepted into three of the top ballet schools in the UK so I'm not really sure how that happened were you always really flexible I was I yeah. definitely and that's the thing with ballet it's it's very much um there's a lot of genetics that go into it so um if anyone is interested in dance it's kind of to do with like the arch of your foot and the shape of your legs and I was very lucky because I definitely had some of those things um, that were on working my side, like yeah. working for me. Um, but like, it's still probably one of the achievements that I am proudest of. Like, whenever I'm having a bad day, I'm like, you did that. Like, yeah. that's pretty impressive. We're dancing. Um, since our topic this week is body image, and I yes. know that you have beautiful body image story. When did you first notice that you had like kind of weakness in your body and then? Um. So obviously, in dance, you spend a lot of time in just a leotard and pink ballet tights staring in the mirror at yourself all yeah. day. So I think it's, you know, it's inevitable. You're very body aware as a dancer. Um, and people make a lot of comments about your body as well. Like, mm -hmm. um, you know, especially teachers that might not mean something by it, but people will make um, maybe comments about the shape and things like that. Um, but for me, it was probably around 16. I would say I was kind of okay up until that point. And it was actually another student who made a comment about my body that mm. was the trigger for me. Um, 
this girl had been suffering from an eating disorder for, for many years and she came in and she made a comment about the shape of my bum <laughs> and then um, she just basically said she was like oh you're such a beautiful dancer but your bum is like way too big for ballet like what are you going to do about it and I, I'm not really like been aware that yeah, sounds silly it, yeah. so I was kind of like remember like looking in the mirror like at my bum being like oh my gosh she's right like it, it's so big it's it, it's huge and that was really like the the defining moment in the start of my um poor body image you know what i mean and it just kind yeah. of like took a very dramatic downward spiral from that point um it's amazing that one comment yeah one person do that it's that person one comment not even yeah remember you yeah they might it, even not think twice she about probably it. doesn't yeah, you know what i mean think about you as a person yeah and, and it like show what your words and it do. affected like the rest of my life you know what i mean yeah. like, it, it's actually crazy when you put it like yeah. that like and that's why you, we should always be so like thoughtful with our words when yeah. we're talking around body image about other people because it's uh, like you said it might be something yeah. small and passing that you might yeah. not think a lot about but actually it can be just so detrimental yeah. on another person's mental health the best way to talk about other people's bodies is to not talk about them at yeah all. yeah it's very <laughs> there's true. no need for you yeah. to have your opinion at all no just don't share it yeah it's no it's not yeah. how do you feel like it affected your day-to-day -day life yeah. So I can't describe how detrimental it was in my day to day life. Like I look back at like that girl back then, and I, I actually like don't recognize her. It's great. It's just crazy to me now. Um, but it just it's like I said, just every single decision that I made throughout my day was based around my body image and my food and my exercise. So I, I couldn't be like a normal person. There was no sort of like getting up and spending a day with your family or um hanging out with your friends that that just wasn't possible for me because it wouldn't fit into these sets of rules that i had for myself um i couldn't eat the same food that other people had made i couldn't eat food that was prepared by someone else um my stereotypical day used to look kind of like i would wake up at 6 a.m i would run for like an hour or two um, I would come home, I would eat a little apple, like chopped up in cubes, and then I'd go and train and dance all day. Yes. And I was exhausted. Yeah. Like I was miserable, I cried all the time. My my training and my technique as a dancer actually just went downhill. Worse, like, yeah. oh my goodness, I can't even describe. Like I actually just got worse as like time went on because um you, don't, you have to feel yourself. Yeah, <laughs> because my relationship with my body was just getting worse and worse and worse. And so was my dancing, and then the, the one thing didn't help the other. Do you know what I mean? It's like they were both just like exploding against yeah. each other. Um, and I, I was really, really depressed. I got sent home like numerous times. I was on um, uh, um, medication yeah. for, for depression, um, therapy, hospital. Just, yeah, it was just a very, very, very black and bleak time in my life. Um, and it, yeah, it's like I said, it's, it's crazy that that literally all resolved, uh, revolved, sorry, that literally all revolved around the shape of my stomach. Do you know what I mean? Like that yeah. it's just madness to me now that that affected my life and career and just everything yeah. about me to, to that extreme. I think it's little decisions that you don't realize mm. that it makes like, even like you were saying, like you couldn't like hang out with your friends because it didn't serve getting smaller. Yeah, yeah. And, like just making yourself feel smaller. Yeah. It's like, I couldn't even have someone make me a cup of tea because I was like, I don't know how much milk, milk they're gonna put in it. Yeah. Like, it, these are the things that people who don't understand kind of that eating disorder mindset, um, these are the things that like go on in, in that it's person's constant. head, like yeah. constantly. It's like this screaming noise that it's not quiet for a second. And I think it is quite hard to relate to unless you've kind of ever experienced it. And I also do want to point out as well that, um, you know, um, eating disorders um, or negative body image are not just in thin people. Yeah. Like, you do not have to be underweight to have a negative relationship with your body. Um, I've only actually been severely underweight um, a couple of times, but honestly, the hardest, hardest, hardest times in my own journey were actually when I was technically carrying a, maybe yeah. a little bit more weight for me. That's when I found that I was struggling the most, and especially because I felt like my emotions weren't valid because I was like, oh, people are gonna look at my body and be like, she looks healthy, she looks normal, yeah. so therefore she's fine. It's like it's in her head, like what's yeah. she talking about? But I think when it's like, you know, if you broke your leg and someone can physically see there's something wrong with you, um, people are very like keen to help you and sympathetic. Yeah. So when I looked healthier, I was actually probably struggling internally the most. 
but wasn't getting the help that I needed. So this is for, you know, it's for all bodies. Yeah. Body image is for all bodies, whatever size, whatever, whatever shape you are. If you're having these And forms, gender as well. Yeah, and gender. And and absolutely, yeah. absolutely. If you're having negative thoughts when Excessive. it comes to food yeah. and exercise and you're thinking about your body image, you know, numerous times during the day and you find um, that it's affecting your life in this way as well. Like, I cannot encourage you enough to, you know, start Reach reaching out, out and help. getting the help for it because it is valid no matter what you look like. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And I think I think I read something crazy the other day and it was literally like 70% of people. Like, yeah, it's crazy. Definitely. Like, it, it's not it's two thirds of women. Yeah, are on two thirds. Yeah. Oh, that just like makes half me of so upset. Are on diet. Mm -hmm. So, like, that calorie. Counting and it's and it's everywhere. You yeah. cannot get away from it. You know, you go on social media. It is it, everything's it is telling you to lose everywhere. It. It's on commercials. It's when you walk down the street. It's calories are written when you go into a restaurant yeah. on the menu. You like you you know we're only humans. You you cannot get away from diet culture. Yeah. It is absolutely everywhere. So yeah. you know, I'm not surprised we're all completely obsessed with yeah. with it you know what yeah. i mean like, when do you feel like you were able to either that turning point where you started to improve it or how did you realize so um i definitely hit rock, buck, rock, rock, yeah. rock bottom again when when i was uh, around 23 uh, to the point where i actually quit um a dance job at the time and i came home because i just got myself into such a such a black hole again and in all honesty, um, I just remember like being in the kitchen one morning and I was kind of crying and getting so upset again and so emotional and just talking about me, 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 I know what I need to do, so I just need to do this, I need to do that. And it was just me, 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 me. And then all of a sudden my stepdad just looked at me and he went, for goodness sakes, he was like, can you stop talking about yourself for one second and actually go and think about somebody else? And I was like, oh my goodness, I was like, it's just so true because that is the thing with with negative body image and you know if any of you girls can relate to this it's true like every thought process you have no room for is about you that yeah. you can't see outside like your own little bubble like your whole day revolves around what you are eating what you look like are you bloated today how can you cover this and um, you know what i mean it's like it's it's actually just like such a selfish thing you know yeah. what i mean and like it, yeah, you just cannot stop talking about yourself. Like, and I just used to talk about myself what 24 like, yeah. hours a day and what I looked like, and it was just about me. You know yeah. what I mean? I I was giving nothing back to anyone else. Like, and I wasn't a very yeah. fun person to be around at the time. Like, yeah. I wasn't being nice to my family. Like I said, I wasn't hanging out with my friends. Like, I was kind of just like offering nothing to the world. I was just like in this own little black hole of. Yeah. My own obsession. No, that, yeah. no, and I was so blinkered. Yeah. I just I couldn't see or hear anything that anyone was saying to me. It was just like you could speak to me and try and make me feel better all day. I was deaf to it. Yeah. I couldn't hear anything, any advice that people would give to me. I couldn't hear it. I couldn't hear advice that doctors would give. I couldn't hear advice that colleagues would give. I was just like you know, it's an illness and it's an obsession. But for some reason, that just like really hit home yeah. and I was just like oh my goodness like yeah. they wanted wow. space to think about other yeah a hundred percent and in all honesty that's how it really started to change for me and this was not quick again I, I always really like to say this for me again it's been years worth of work and it still is work I do not think that body image is something that you can yeah. just be like okay I love myself yeah. yay like everything's good now over that it's, yeah it doesn't work like that it's hard work and you have to put in that hard work constantly because our bodies are always changing. Yeah. This is the thing. You are always going to be up Fluctuating. and down, or you know, you might have a baby one day. You might, you know, we're getting you get older. Yeah, like aging bodies, processes. Yeah, yeah, things happen in life, and your body will constantly adapt and change. So you know, working on that self love is something that we constantly have to do for the rest of our lives. Um, but the real, real point for me was thinking, wow, I like. Uh, just need to start putting all of that obsession and all of that energy into thinking about other people and not myself. And honestly, that was the start of my healing because I think I started to, you know, reach out to girls or women that were also suffering with the same yeah. problem and just working and talking to the people and seeing what a difference I could make on their life was like, 
oh my goodness all of a sudden the noise just started to like dim dim it wasn't going away but it, it was dimming and you know over the years it's like it's very rare for me to kind of have triggering thoughts now or I can catch myself if I see myself falling into old patterns I can kind of be like okay just a second like yeah. stand back what do you need right now um you know because this is the thing it is never about the body image yeah. it's not about the body image that is not the issue the issue is what's going on inside and for me it was just this feeling of not being good enough I thought I start dance too late I'm not good enough I'm you know I'm never going to be as good as these girls that have done it since they were three I'm not talented I'm not clever I'm not smart and so the way I'm going to control this is by looking the best you know what I mean and and that's what it was it was just this whole Com it was just this utter lack of confidence in yeah. all honesty and that's the way that I tried to control it and yeah. that's what I needed to work on it wasn't dieting like yeah. dieting was not going to fix anything it was just that it's just that I didn't love myself yeah. and that is the bottom line you yeah. know what I mean and we talked about that at the beginning of the week it's kind yeah. of we want or what everyone wants and what drives everything we do is that we want to feel accepted yeah and feel a part of a tribe and feel like a sense of belonging Definitely. that people want you yeah and that you are love and worthy yeah. of love and yeah. that's driving everything we do from our yeah. jobs or whatever identity we have as an athlete or your job it all goes around like i need to be good enough for yeah. people to love me yeah and that's where i mean all of our body image comes from as well yeah. and kind of like the myth we talked about earlier in the week that yeah if you do reach a certain image you will be worthy yeah and, will be loved. Yeah. and that's it's just not true yeah. it's a trap you're yeah like, raw that we are all being yeah. set up to fall into yeah and i've had the perfect the you know perfect, perfect yeah. body like I, I have had the perfect body um you know, I have been absolutely, you know, the, the media picture perfect, yeah. teeny tiny, size four, um, six pack abdominals, yeah. uh, not an ounce of fat on me. And I can tell you, I have never been so miserable yeah. in my entire existence. Like I have just never felt more like disgusted and upset with myself, yeah. like at that, at that image, at, at that, sorry, desired yeah. sort of image. And that's like the craziest thing about it. You yeah. think that it's going to bring you all of this joy and it's going to fix every single problem in your life. And it doesn't, yeah. I promise you, and it just creates it? more. Yeah. And it's, yeah, exactly. How, how would it? Changing the way yeah. People yeah. aren't going to treat you exactly. better. <laughs> exactly. No, yeah. exactly. Definitely. Yeah. I think the only, um, like, and I think it can be hard because I remember when I was in college, I had a really bad bout of, like, anxiety and depression. Yeah. And it was so, my anxiety was so bad that I couldn't eat. Yeah. Like, I couldn't, I literally yeah. just barf it up out of fear. Yeah. I, I, yeah. My, my, my mind, my obsessive thoughts are all around me dying. I was yeah. obsessed I was dying. I know that sounds so weird, but, like, no, I was obsessed. No, no, yeah, yeah. Like, I was sure I was dying. Yeah. I don't know where it came from. It was completely just an obsessive yeah. attack. Yeah. And I kept on going to the nurse almost every day being like, I think something like I must have yeah. a yeah. tumor in my stomach yeah. or something. Like something's wrong. And they were doing yeah. all the blood tests and the doctors would just tell me over and over, they're yeah. like, you are you're perfectly healthy. healthy. Yeah. All of your blood levels are great. Like mm -hmm. you're so healthy. Like you're actually like very healthy. Yeah. And I was like, I know I'm dying. And I, so I couldn't eat and I went down to like maybe like 114 pounds and I'm 5'8", so yeah. I was skin and bones. I was, my stomach, I could see my stomach moving. Wow. Like I was so bad. Yeah. And it was the most, it, it was so hard because I would be shaking on the bus, like I couldn't eat and I was, yeah. I felt like I was, I felt so sick. Yeah. And it was a time in my life where people kept on coming up to me being like, and girl, even my close mm. friends were like, you, I'm so jealous. Like, yeah. you look amazing. Yes, yes. You look so good. Yeah. And I was like, I feel, yeah. like I was, I was about inches away from tears at yes, so true. I was yeah. just sitting there shaking, yeah. about to cry, and people are yeah. telling me you look beautiful. I totally and you're like, relate. And what? Yeah. Is right. And I'm like, I'm so unhappy. It's yeah. so weird. That's the exact same with me. Like, I would get validation, especially from my coaches and trainers at the time. They'd be like, you, you look really? amazing. Stay at this weight. You Perfect. So much better. Inches away from like, crying. Like, yeah. Like, and, and honestly, it's like you said, I cried every yeah. single day. Like, so if there was a weird. day where I didn't cry, I would literally be like, oh my goodness. Like, I didn't day. cry today. Yeah. This is a great day. Like, yeah. I'm winning. I cried every single day. I was so starving and my hair was falling out and yeah. actually if anyone is interested I did do a full video about this yeah, on my definitely. YouTube channel so definitely go and check that out um I think it's called like the truth about having a six pack or something like that but yeah I totally relate like yeah. it's, it's so funny how you get such validation off other people when you're the even worst. though like you're probably the unhealthiest like you've ever been what do you think if you could 
go back and tell your mm -hmm. past self. Yeah. Um, like maybe some management tips. Yeah. Things like that. Of okay. How you can so, yeah. so the first thing I just want you to do is just just give yourself a big hug and just be really kind and patient towards yourself, okay? Because it's, it's a really, really challenging thing to have to go through. And sitting from someone who's come out the other side of it now, please just like listen to me saying to you like that it will get better. It might not be better tomorrow, it might not be better next week, but I promise you there is light at the end of the tunnel and that it will get better. So just, just knowing that, like if that can just bring you some comfort, like definitely. it definitely is going to get better. You're not going to feel this way forever yeah. about yourself. Um, so my second tip is probably to do with social media actually, and that is unfollowing anyone that you find triggering. Um, because you know, we're all just on Instagram, you know, way all too it. much these yeah. days. We're obsessed, we love yeah. it, we can't help it. Yeah. Um, and even if someone is super positive, like yeah. we were saying this before, like even if someone is super positive, but you just find something about them triggering, maybe it's the way that their body looks, yeah. or, or if you're just so yeah. jealous of them that when you see, if you're yeah. on your phone and mm. it's making you feel jealous when mm. you see that person, yeah. Yeah. then you don't just, need to follow, you don't need them. To follow <laughs> them. Like you don't need to see that. They yeah. say that Instagram kind of gives you like 250 reasons a day why you're not good enough in yeah. some way. and. It's just a fake highlight reel of someone's life. You know what I mean? Like you have no idea what's actually going on behind that camera lens. No. And so yeah, just make sure you do a really good detox and make sure that you're following people and women that you can, and men that you can relate to. Yeah. yeah. Like even if you can relate to like their body shape or what their interests are, what their sports are. What their values is, are. What their values yeah. are. Like just, just following people that are actually offering you something. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like education and tips and things that are gonna better your mind and body and not things that are to do with aesthetics or losing weight or being skinny or yeah. you know diet tips or you know all of these videos that kind of use language such as like um lose fat and yeah. you know all of that like just just yeah. get rid of it like you don't need that language kind of being drummed in your head and yeah. it's something that's already going on Definitely. anyway do you know what I mean you don't need anyone to validate that for you especially when you don't know them do you know what I mean yeah um third tip is try to speak to your friends and family as much as possible. And I know this is a really, really, really tricky one. And especially sometimes in female friendship groups, I think this gets confused because it kind of becomes like a bit of a weird bonding. competition or yeah. bonding thing between body girls. Talk. Yeah. It's like how you yeah. actually can bond. Like, yeah. It's like, oh, you hate your body. I hate my body yeah. too. Like we can relate definitely. to each other. Definitely. Definitely. Like, you need to find ways to end the body yes, talk. Yes, definitely. And if someone's disparaging yeah. themselves, I just, what yeah. I always say, because people, I do this almost every day, is go yeah. like, I think you look perfect. Yeah. Or I think you're beautiful. Exactly. And then just like, move the conversation along. Because yeah. they want to, and it's fun to talk about. When I remember being a teenager and yeah, it being a topic, and I loved the validation of the yeah. insecurity. And yeah. uh, it's at that age, it was fun, but like, you need to be strong enough to just be like, if they are trying to yeah. kind of get you to see you need to remove like, yourself yeah. from just it. Change the topic just that change the topic. Like, oh, I think you're just go, that. you're anyway, beautiful, um, end the conversation. Yeah. Just don't even give it any energy or yeah. time of day. You've just got to remove yourself from kind of talk like that. And it, if you've got friends that, you know, are just are not lighting you up and aren't bringing the best out in you, just maybe try spending less time with those friends. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's so many other people out there that are gonna so encourage you to do really lovely things. Like you should be out right now, like adventuring yeah. and learning and, you know, doing all of these things. Like if people are making you feel negative, then just, just try to like consciously yeah. spend less time with people like that and spend time with people that make you feel yeah. really uplifted join and great about yourself. Yeah, yeah. Jo join another Start club. Start taking ballet classes. It's, yeah, exactly. Something. Like I was saying, yeah. start a new hobby. Like you're yeah. never too old to start something. Like yeah. I've just started drawing and doing all this triathlon training yeah. now. You know, Jen does ballet. Yeah. Like get yourself involved in a hobby and around people that are, uh, I always say like there's two types of people in the world. There's like radiators and drains. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? Vampire and drains. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like so, surround yourself with people that make you feel radiated. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, and same with family. Like I feel like everyone's got like the story of like the grandma or something being like, that's too many roast potatoes. Yeah. Or again, like kind of using language yeah. that is quite triggering or they might make comments about the way that your body looks. Um, you know, there's definitely been times in my life where someone's commented on me gaining or losing weight. And I know that can be extremely difficult and upsetting. And again, I think it's just communication. Like you just have to let people know that you're finding this hard at the moment and that kind of language just like isn't, isn't helpful. really helpful. Yeah. So just maybe like, don't talk, like talk about it like that around yeah. me. 
Um, and I think as well, like it gets passed on a lot in families. Like if you've got Definitely. maybe a mum who's always very big on Insecure, diet culture and yeah. into her body. You, heard, you grew up listening to her yeah. disparaging herself. That's another and she, huge one. Even yeah. though she doesn't realize it, she's yeah. passing on to Unto you. you. And yeah. every time she says it about herself, yeah. especially like sometimes yeah. like there, it's like, it's, it's hurtful as a daughter to yeah, hear definitely. because you're like, I think you're great. Yeah, and, De and, and especially when you yeah. actually see things in their body that's very similar to yours, yeah. so genetics, and then they're yeah. talking like in a really yeah, negative way about it. it, and you're like, I hate my nose. It's yeah, like, exactly. And you're like, I have? but I love my nose. Yeah. You know what I mean? So again, these are things that are really hard, and if you feel that like you can't speak to them, just try and maybe speak to someone else and just say, you know, I'm feeling like this a little bit, and um you know just get it out like talking really yeah. is the best medicine you know what yeah. i mean and and just trying to be like as compassionate to them and see that it's you know it affects people of all ages as well yes. um 100 yeah. yeah and then like little things to do that actually like to do with more of like your actual fitness routine and and nutrition and stuff like i just actually want to get really excited like being fit and strong and healthy is like so cool and so like much fun like it is so much fun. Yeah. Like we literally go for like runs yeah, and bike rides. I feel socialized, and, really. Oh, it's just amazing. Yeah. Like being fit and healthy is like yeah. such a beautiful thing. And so, it needs to be something you enjoy. Exactly. Doing. Exactly. So, like, if you don't like running, you yeah. don't need to do yeah. triathlons and run. Like even though we're a triathlon club, like it, you need to find the movement that makes yeah. you happy that you look forward to. One hundred percent. And um, or else there's no point in doing it. It's just like getting excited about your health and fitness yeah. journey like it's so exciting and it's like every single time you're making yourself a meal or you're going out to do your training or something i want you to think like am i having fun right now yeah. like is this like really nice like every time you're making yourself food i want you to think like is this like the most yummiest nourishing thing that yeah. i'm craving right now I want like to eat this. i want to eat this like yeah. this sounds good yeah. and like don't same, have yeah. salad every day if you don't like salad yeah Find and like that you do like. not copying other people like yeah. just because like this girl on Instagram's like I love a smoothie every day like personally if I had a smoothie for breakfast I would like be hungry yeah. like I would eat my own arm by like yeah, an hour later like, like I personally that. love like a massive eggs. bowl of oh, oats or eggs. some eggs mm -hmm. or yeah something really super filling in the morning and that's my body and I'm not gonna like apologize for that because someone else feels better yeah. not eating breakfast maybe yeah. and that's fine you've just got to stay in your own lane do you know what I mean and like do what's best for you and your own body because at the end of the day only you can know that by listening yeah. like i can't tell you that jen can't tell you that yeah. a trainer can't tell you that like yeah. the the more you learn to listen to your body and work with your body like just the more positive relationship you're going to have with it Definitely. and the more you're going to find that like self-love and respect for yourself yeah, a quick summary yeah, for you let's guys. summarize yes yeah. so i think you want to start by saying that everyone is a completely different shape and size yeah we get given this one body one one body person. in life yeah. yeah and um one percent of the population is this unobtainable sort of image yeah. that we're all told we're supposed to fit into which is physically impossible we yeah. all have different joints we all have different muscle tone yeah. we all have different bone structures like yeah, every color. single one of us is yeah. beautiful yeah. and unique and different in and our own special way exactly yeah. and yeah. and even those people don't look like that because those people are yeah through surgery yeah. and through makeup and hair and mm -hmm. teens and I'm also just getting edited. Edited, <laughs> editing is even huge. Even those people yeah. don't look like that. Yeah, exactly. Then, yeah. yeah, it's so, so true. Nobody looks Nobody like that. Nobody looks like it. Yeah. So I think that's like the first thing to yeah. know. And um, yeah, the second thing is like, I just really want to like close off with is um, when you find yourself like having these negative thoughts, um, we were just saying like, we want you to like go back to what your actual value is because it's not the way you look. So Jen, you explained this yeah. to me, I like you said it so really nicely. Through this week, our whole yeah. goal is that like we, obviously we all want to be loved and yeah. we have been told that to be loved and to be happy, you need to look a certain way. So it's your about your appearance. Yeah. And so when you have those obsessive thoughts about your appearance, there's a reason you're doing that. Yeah. So what our goal this week is to pick out different values that have nothing to do with your appearance. Yes. So like let's say my top three values as a person that I bring to the earth is that I'm a good daughter, I'm a good friend, and I like love triathlon yeah. and I want to spread it. Yeah. So if I was having obsessive thoughts about my body or my appearance in general, is try to shift your values. So if you have that obsessive thought of like, oh, like, um, like what do I look like today? What is this? Like, just try to shift it to one of your new values. So yeah. maybe instead of you know worrying about it for 30 minutes or sitting there straightening your hair, 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 because you hate your curly hair or something. Yeah. You could be spending that time doing something nice for your mom. Yeah. 
you could be buying your uh, friend a gift or making her a gift yeah. or you could be um, helping like maybe you're making a YouTube channel for yeah. triathlon or yeah. whatever you're doing is like you could be Bring, making the world a better place. Yeah. You want to take than, that yeah. energy, that obsessive energy, which is a drive, yeah. which is a positive thing because yeah. you're driven, and you want to refocus it into yeah. making a difference in maybe someone else's life or bettering yeah. your own life in, in a positive way. You know yeah. what I mean? Take that obsession and use that energy and time yeah. and flip it around. Yeah. Like, Think definitely. about if all of the mm. women in the world, all of the women, which is 51% of the population, yeah. spent the hours and the mental energy and the emotional energy that we yeah. spend hating ourselves, yeah. um, doing anything else. Like I feel like we could have had <gasps> cured cancer by oh now. Like we, we could have done so yeah, much. Like have, yeah. Who knows what yeah. we are, could have spent those yeah. hours and mental yeah. energy doing. Yeah. Um, so like we really want you to just realize like your value is not based on your appearance. Yeah. Your value is based on we get to pick what it is. Yeah. So whatever it drives you. Yeah. And I just want to add on from like an athlete point of view as well. Like if you are someone who is more of a serious athlete. I know it kind of does change it slightly because you know for example like as a dancer you're supposed to kind of like fit into this certain body image or you know look a certain way so it does kind of add elements of difficult you have to be aware yeah. of your body yeah so it's like mm. yeah you're saying about your arch of your yes. feet yeah. and your leg shape yeah things like that matter to the sport yes so it's really definitely hard to when yeah. do you stop talking about yeah your body. exactly so, you so i think yeah. again it's again what we're saying about turning around this energy like when you find yourself obsessing about your body image obsess about your sport instead yeah. okay that could be time for you Studying. to practice yeah. um you know like get a new training plan or like study athletes that have done yeah. you know what i mean that again put that energy and Do put that focus training. yeah into your sport and just just leave the leave the body image crap on the side. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like obsess about your sport, obsess about your performance. Yeah. And as you learn, and, yeah, obsessing about your body image, mm -hmm. even when doesn't your sport revolves around the yeah. body, isn't gonna it doesn't help get your you training. anywhere. It doesn't make you any better. It yeah. makes you worse. Like yeah. you need to take that energy and obsess about what you want to achieve and yeah. what you want to do. Your okay. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And your dreams need to focus on not yeah. your appearance. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, at the end of the day. The more you love and work with your body, the more it loves and works with you yeah. back. And yeah, just keep thinking that like everything you do, just kind and loving and patient and it's just going to keep on getting a little bit better and you're going to strengthen that little yeah. love muscle up in that brain Definitely. just like a little bit more each and every day. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we love you guys. We and love make you guys. sure you follow Motion yeah. Medicine on Instagram and follow her on YouTube. And yeah. she posts really incredible inspirational stuff oh, and lots of great, like, you. how to train with anxiety and depression. Yeah, and, and body image yeah. stuff. And, or yeah. how to train on your, around your cycle and your period. Yes. Like, she does yes. really great videos. Yeah. So, um, yeah. definitely check her out. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Bye, guys.